series versus parallel is just simply two different configurations, little resistors like this could be in. So these three resistors all are connected here, they're all connected there. The three resistors are all side by side, so we say they are parallel to each other. Down here, one resistor comes right after the other resistors, and when they are in line like that, we say they are in series. Here, these two resistors are in parallel with each other, but those two are in series with this one. So it's a combination of parallel and series. And it doesn't just relate to those little resistors, anything that has resistance, like the filament of a light bulb. But here, these five light bulbs can be configured by swinging these little bars in or out of place, but they can be configured in a number of different ways. Here, they are all in series because whatever current goes through that is also going to go through here and here and here and here. Those light bulbs come one after the other. They're in series. In this one, they're all side by side. They're all connected right along there. So all of these are in parallel with each other. And then here we have one light bulb, then another, then another. Those are in series with each other. These two are in parallel with each other, but the two that are in parallel are in series with the three. So that's a combination of both series and parallel. Now let's see how current behaves when resistors are in series. So here I have my positive uh, plug for my power and then my negative here and current, this is conventional current, goes from positive to negative. But you can see whatever charges go through there also go through there and here and here and there. So current is how many charges go by every second. So however much current is running through that one, the same amount is running through this one and that one and that one and that one. When resistors are in series, the current through each one must be the same. If one of those, if we unscrew the filament from one of those, or unscrew the light bulb from its socket, um, and electricity can't go through that filament, then the current isn't going to be able to go through any of those, because it has to have a continuous path from the beginning all the way to the end. Now let's see how current behaves when these light bulbs are in parallel. So we have a number of different ways that the current could flow. Some of the current could go through this way or that way or that way or that way. And maybe you've often heard that current or that electricity follows the path of least resistance. Well, it's, that's only partially true. It's not that if, if this light bulb had less resistance than any of those, it's not true that all of the current would go through the path of least resistance. Just more of the current would be going through uh, this path here. And in my animation here, I'm showing that about the same amount of current is going through each of those. That would mean that the resistance of each of those light bulbs is about the same. So we have the current here, there, 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 and there. But look at the current here. Right at this junction, all of the current that went through each of those now combines and comes out right here. So the current in all six of these places, um, I'm using A for an amp meter, measuring the amperage. So that's why I have A1, A2, A3, all the way up to A6. But the current at each of those locations all combine, they add up to equal the total amount of current that's running through right there. If one of those light bulbs got unscrewed and um, unplugged so that the current can't go through there, it's not going to stop it from going through those other ones because it still has a path to go from the positive to the negative. 
it, unscrewing the one would only stop the current running through there. But still, the total amount of current added together should equal what it is right there. So with that in mind, if I have a circuit with a wire coming through here and here, and they combine right here, if I've got two coulombs of charge going by here every second, and four coulombs of charge going by here every second, maybe it just stands to reason that we've got to have six coulombs of charge going by there every second. Just the current combined to, to be the total there. If I've got seven amps coming this way and three amps went that way, we can figure out quite easily how much was going that way because, well, it's going to be four. The three and the four total of seven. And as easy as that is, we call that Kirchhoff's junction rule. And uh, it, it, all Kirchhoff's junction rule states is that however much current is entering a junction has to exactly equal the amount of current that's leaving that junction. So seven in and a total of seven out. Six in and six out. That's just simply known as Kirchhoff's junction rule. All right, now let's see how voltage behaves in series versus parallel. Remember, voltage is how much energy there is per charge. So the power supply connected to positive and negative here pushed all these charges together, did work on those charges, gave each of those charges some energy. So I'm going to represent this not as a charge, but uh, or the size of it is going to represent how much energy that charge has. So we can see that these light bulbs are in series, and when it goes through there and gives off some light, it gives off some energy, gives off a little more, gives off a little bit more, and every time it goes through a resistor, it's going to give off a little bit of its energy. By the time it gets all the way back to the end, it will have given up all of the energy that the power supply originally gave it. Uh, these little symbols here represent a voltmeter. So to use a voltmeter, you have to touch it on either side of the light bulb to compare how much energy those charges had before and how much they had after. So how does voltage behave in series? It gives up some energy, gives up some energy, gives up some energy, but the total amount of energy that was given up by each of those charges would equal the total amount of energy that was given them in the first place. So if I had a voltmeter and I touched it here and all the way over here, it would equal that plus that plus that plus that plus that. Okay, so that was voltage when they're in series. Now let's look at how voltage behaves when these light bulbs are in parallel. The main thing to understand here is that voltage is energy per charge, and whatever charge goes through that light bulb and comes out to the power supply here, that same charge does not also go through here. Charges are trying to get from this side of the power supply to this side of the power supply. So what happens is the charge goes through there, gives up energy, gives up energy, gives up energy, but it gives up all the energy that the power supply originally had. So if, the, if I measure the voltage between here and here, and it's 6 volts, well, this would get 6 volts, and that would get 6, and each of these would get 6 volts. I'll play the animation again so that we can see. Whatever charge goes through here, it gives up its energy getting back to the power supply. But that charge that goes through here does not, that same charge does not turn around and go through any other ones. So whatever energy the power supply gave it, those charges lose all that energy by the time they get back to here. When they're in parallel, everything gets the total voltage. This is the total voltage. When light bulbs are in parallel, each gets the total voltage. Now this was the symbol, the universal symbol for a resistor. It's kind of like water flowing through a pipe. 
that if it uh, pipe makes all these jagged turns like this, uh, it's going to impede the flow of the, the water. So how do you think, if these were light bulbs, how do you think the current running through each of these is going to compare? And it, it really is the same. We pretend that wires have no resistance, and voltage is only used when current runs through a resistor. So what happens is, oh, and I should say also that this is the symbol for something that creates voltage. We have a long one and a short one. The long one is always the positive side of the battery, and this would be the negative side of the battery. So the battery gives these charges energy, and they're not losing any energy as they go through that wire. It splits here, but a charge can go this way and a charge can go that way. When that charge goes through a resistor, it loses that energy. Okay, So that's just going to be the same thing here. That a charge comes through here, the charge goes through there. It's not losing any energy until it goes through the resistor. So if, if this is 12 volts, I'll back it up here. If this is 12 volts, this would get 12 volts, and that would get 12 volts, and that would get 12 volts. But this circuit is really identical to that one. Each of those resistors would also get 12 volts. All right, and they can get confusing, but we have to start practicing being able to see um, the different configurations and how they are made. I'm going to just here. The question is, which one is not like the others? So maybe just pause, think about it, and then come back. I really hope you paused the video and thought about it instead of me just giving the answer. If not, pause it now and think about it. But I'm going to go ahead and give the answer. Here we have the battery. We have a resistor in series with these two in parallel. Series with two things 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 in parallel. So all of these are the same. This one is different. These are just three resistors in series. Okay, so we've learned how current and voltage behaves in series and parallel. And Kirchhoff's junction rule says that the current here plus there plus there should equal the current here, the total current. So you add up the current entering and the current leaving should be the same. And then because these are in parallel, they get the same voltage. But this is Ohm's law. V equals IR and we're just solved for V. So I solved for the current I. So we can substitute this equation in for here. The, the voltage total, voltage total divided by resistance total would be the current total. And the voltage at the first one divided by the resistance of the first one added to this. We're just substituting this equation for each of those. But the thing to remember is that because these are in parallel with each other, this resistor gets this, the full voltage of the battery. So does this, so does this. So the total amount of voltage is just the same for the first resistor, the second resistor, and the third resistor. Because this voltage, that voltage, and that voltage, and that voltage are all the same, we can divide that whole equation through by the voltage, and we would just be left with this equation here. What that says is that this resistor, that one, and that one all have resistance, each of them, but the total resistance, or 1 over the total resistance, would be the same thing as 1 over the resistance of 1, plus 1 over the resistance of the other, plus 1 over the resistance of the other. And this is a, an equation that describes that res relationship. This says 1 over the total resistance when they're in parallel is equal to the sum of the individual of 1 over the individual 
resistors. All right, so let's let's see what that means here. If I had these three resistors all in parallel with each other, this is the equation we would use to find the equivalent resistance of all three of them. So if there are three individual resistors, it just means 1 over the total resistance in parallel is 1 over the resistance of the first one plus 1 over the resistance of the second one plus 1 over the resistance of the third one. If those resistors are just simply in series with each other, this is the equation we use to find the equivalent resistance in series. You just add up the individual resistors. So in this case, there are two resistors, I is equal to two, and you just take the equivalent resistance in series, it's just the resistance of the first one plus the resistance of the second one. All right, some practice with that. If this one has 220 ohms of resistance, and this has 470 ohms of resistance, they're in series, so it really is as easy as taking 220 plus 470 and getting 690 ohms. If I were to measure the resistance from here all the way to over here, I would get about 690 ohms. When they are in parallel, 240, 100, and 470 ohms of resistance, this is the equation we use. So we take 1 over 220 plus 1 over 100 plus 1 over 470. When we do that on our calculator, we get a decimal value. It's really important to remember that that decimal value is not the equivalent resistance in parallel. That decimal value is 1 over the equivalent resistance in parallel. To, so to find that, we have to take the reciprocal of this and the reciprocal of that. So if I take 1 over that answer I got, I get about 60 ohms of resistance. So when I have 220 and 100 and 470 ohms of resistance in each of those, that is an equivalent resistance of about 60 ohms. If I put my alligator clip here and over there with my multimeter and measure the resistance, I should measure about 60 ohms. Okay, It would be just identical as if those three in parallel with each other would be just the same as if there was one resistor that had a value of 60 ohms. Alright, so it gets a little more challenging when we have parts like this. Students are tempted to just take one over that number and one over that number and add it to that number. But that doesn't work because this missed out on that very important step of getting an answer with that and then taking one over that answer. In fact, if I take this and that, these are going to be very small decimals. If I add that to 100, I'm, that's going to be an, a number just a little bit more than 100. We can't do it that way. What we have to do is to chunk it down into little pieces. So this 470 and this 220 are in parallel with each other. So let's find out what the equivalent of those two are. So we take 1 over 220 plus 1 over 470. We get a decimal value. But remember that decimal value is not the total in parallel. It's 1 over the total. So you have to take the reciprocal of that number. So those two in parallel with each other is equivalent to 150 ohms. Okay, It would be just like, instead of 470 and 220 in parallel, it would be just like I had one resistor of 150 ohms in series with one that was 200, uh, 100. Okay. Now we can chunk those together. This is just in series with each other. So it is as easy as just adding 150 to 100 and getting 200. So this original problem up here, two in parallel with each other with one in series, would have an equivalent resistance if it was just 250 ohms having a single resistor of that value. All right, let's do this one. Now this starts to look complicated, but we've already done this problem. We already calculated what that one was. It was 60. 
Now we've already calculated what that one was. It was 150. Now let's take what this one is. Okay, this was 240. So all of that is in series with this, which is in series with this. So you just have to take that plus that plus that to get the total resistance. If I measure from here all the way to over there, I should get 430 ohms of resistance. Let's look carefully at this. Maybe this would be a good time to pause and think, uh, hit pause on the video and have you think uh, how you would approach this problem. I sure hope you hit pause, but let me tell you how students typically do this. Typically, students want to say, hey, all those are in parallel with each other, and all those are in parallel with each other. So I take one over, one over, one over, get an answer, take one over the answer. But that doesn't work. It, that would be treating it as if they connected down here to a point, and then they'd be in parallel, and these are in parallel. But that's not how it was wired. These didn't touch each other, so you can't do it that way. What you got to do is see that these two are in series with each other, and I can find an equivalent of those two. There you just add them up as 690. Then my, what I might do is go ahead and see what these were. And we've, we've done that problem before. It was 150. So those two have an equivalent of 150. And that 150 is in series with this 100. So between here and there, that has an equivalent of 250. So that's getting a little busy. Let's say what we have here. That would be just that whole thing here would be identical to as if this one was 100, uh, 690 and this one was 150. Now that we've got it chunked down into that, then we can go ahead and apply 1 over the resistance in parallel, 1 over 690 plus 1 over 250. It gives us a decimal value, but that decimal value is 1 over the total resistance in parallel. So you have to take one over this answer to get that, and all of that is equivalent to about 194 ohms, 184 ohms of resistance. What I want to do is, is connect this back to this equation that we learned real quick, and then we'll be finished. But um, if I had these resistors in series, this was the equation we used to find the resistance of a wire. Well, if I had a wire or a pipe like this, what we're effectively doing is just increasing the overall length. So the length was three times as much, we get three times as much resistance. So it's really just add them up, this resistance plus this resistance plus that resistance equals the total resistance when they're in series. And that makes sense that the more resistors we have in series, the more the total resistance is going to be. But when resistors are in parallel like that, let's think about that back with water flowing through a pipe. If, if water could go through this one or that one or that one, this has some area, that had some area, that had some area. What we've effectively done is increased the total area. So increasing the total area is going to decrease the total amount of resistance. So when resistors are in parallel with each other, the more resistors we have in parallel, the less the total resistance is going to be. All right, so what we've done is we took series and parallel. We've talked about how current behaves in series and parallel, how voltage behaves in series and parallel, and how resistors themselves behave in series and parallel. Hope this helps.